And a very good evening, everyone. Welcome into your Waitangi Day box seat. Hope the public holiday's gone well for you. We've got an action-packed show for you tonight. Plenty of action from across the Tasman. Michael Guerin, as I say, a good evening to you. Didn't quite pan out the way we thought it would, but uh, being on track to see a, a phenomenal performance from Tiger Tara must have still been a pretty cool moment. It was. Um, hi, Greg. Big hi to everybody. I hope you enjoyed your day off if you managed to have one, which most racing people probably didn't, to be completely honest. Uh, unusual feeling, Greg. Over the last 20 years, I've been to Melton slash before that Mooney Valley and Menangle or Harold Park before that a lot of times for feature races. And... It's incredibly rare we send this level of our best race winners, which included the New Zealand Cup winner, the New Zealand Free For All winner, and a horse who was placed in an Auckland Cup, and we get our asses kicked this badly. Like, it wasn't just that Tiger Tara beat them. We were dropping out, couldn't run a place miles off the speed. So does it raise a changing of the guard and the power structure in Australasian harness racing, which tends to be ours are better than theirs? Or is this a seasonal blip? We'll discuss more the Hunter Cup, which looks a lot like the Inter-Dominion final from December the 15th. Or the Victoria Cup, because he did exactly the same in that. We'll have a good look at uh, the Hunter Cup of 2019. Uh, Big Jack Hammer was too good for Temporale and the rest uh, in the Dullard at Group 1 level. Uh, we'll talk about Utmost Delight and how brave she was. Uh, head to Sydney, because of course we had one of the key lead-up races to the Chariots, where we did uh, have some uh, Kiwi hopes in it, and both of them went very well. Bit of an upset win at Addington Raceway. Yes, it was in the Premier Mears. Uh, we'll talk to the new CEO of Addington as well. And a stake increase down south. So some pretty positive news out of there. The AG Hunter Cup, though, very much sought after. Terrific record the Kiwis have had in it. Let's get Dan Malecki to bring them home. 27.2 but here is a horse who is really in the zone Tiger Tara has taken the mantle of the best pacer in the southern hemisphere and he does it again the king of Melton Tiger Tara wins by 10 second our uncle Sam third San Carlo from either flaming flame so it was an obliteration Bay. again low flying Todd McCarthy just loves driving this horse and he continues to do Virtually every time he wins a big race, Michael, his second last quarter breaks the hearts of his opposition and his last four quarters all under 29 seconds. It's speed that you just cannot possibly move on. Particularly not when the horse is in front. Like, it, Tiger Tara in front is a vastly, vastly different animal from Tiger Tara trying to come from back in the field or sitting parked. Because once he gets up against the marker pegs, and he's a big, strong stallion, and, and he looks fantastic when you're up close to him at the moment. He looks a healthy horse, he's very sound. Once he gets up against the markers and he keeps going at whatever speed he wants, because Greg, you can't attack him, because you know he's not gonna hand up, and you know he's probably gonna enjoy it. So then from the 1200, Todd just keeps going faster and faster and faster and faster. So if you are sitting in the running line, which the New Zealand horses have been in this race and also in the Inter-Dominion, or three wide, you're just losing so much ground and you're coming home in these really, really quick times, it's just impossible. But also it takes the horse on your back out of play because even if it's got a lot of speed, it's tired before the 400. So it's spectacular to watch. Um, the gate speed's a crucial factor to that. Put them on the second line in any of these races and the result might have been different, but there's no arguing he's the best horse. Here's the gate speed here, but this was largely always going to happen, so no one was surprised by this. Um, uh, he's the best horse in Australasia at the moment. Whether he could sit parked ex you know, outside, for example, or turn it up, I, d I don't know. Because the only time I've seen him have to sit parked in a major race was the New Zealand Cup, was the New Zealand Cup and he didn't win. So with a better run in the New Zealand Cup, he could have... But the, in saying that... The season of a, yeah. of a truly great horse. We, we were all in awe of him on New Zealand Cup Day. Uh, it felt like he'd won the race, didn't it? We all talked about it after it. Thinking Pretty much so. Like it, 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 was, it was an unreal performance from him. He got beaten by the fixer who couldn't go with him on Saturday night. 
and uh, he down dreamed about me, one of our best ever mares, by sitting outsider. So you're right, if he'd won that New Zealand Cup, he's up there with one of the all-time greats. Um, but his record now is $2.3 million in the bank. It's incredible to think that his performance at his 102nd start on Saturday night was arguably his, his best, and the times would indicate that. And Dan Malecki, who uh, called that race, and has received quite a few plaudits. Now, I talking to you uh, in the green room before about race calls and, and great race calls you remember. You, you don't remember too many because you're normally looking or concentrating on something I, I else. I don't listen to them. Mm. I, I can remember about 10 over 20 years. I, I, I just completely block it out. There's two things I don't like. I don't like listening to race calls, and I hate people talking to me during a race. I hate it. If I know I, this because I've been beside you a couple of times. If I'm the TV and somebody talks to me during a race, I'll just go, shut up, or I'll walk away. Because I'm the, it's a job. You're trying to concentrate. And, yep. but, but it was a great call. I've heard it since, and it sounded great. But I take all the emotion out of play. I was around a lot of different people on Saturday night at the races and post the races who wanted to tell me, because they're full of emotion and they're so charged up, and you're full of adrenaline, and adrenaline's an amazing drug. And they want to say, well, he, he, he's better than Lazarus. You know, Lazarus couldn't have done that. And they get all carried away. But the simple facts of the matter are, Tiger Tara is a wonderful horse. And when you start comparing him to other horses, you're only going to diminish what you saw on Saturday night if you compare him with Lazarus. Because overstaying trips, Lazarus raced him in a New Zealand Cup and better by 10 lengths. Then he raced him in a New Zealand Cup for this trainer, who might have improved the horse. So we'll give you that. Beat him by five and a half lengths. Then they raced in an inter-dominion over 2,900 metres. And this horse led, and Lazarus covered at least, at least two and a half lengths per bend, around three, maybe four bends, and beat him again. And beat him easy. And then he went to the Hunter Cup in this race last year, and Lazarus had parked outside him again for three bends. And thrashed him again. So the, the, the it's, argument, it's not worth having. Well, the other thing is people will say, but this version's Im improved. OK, well, if you want to play that game, if you want to be factual about it and not be emotional, because I don't care which one's better. I just don't. No. It doesn't affect my life in any way. Yes, Tiger Tara has improved. Who's to say Lazarus wouldn't have improved as much? Because people say, oh, but Laz he would have the gate speed. But Lazarus went to North America and got the gate speed we never knew he had. Mm. So if he had gate speed all of a sudden, if he had gate speed last year, he would have, the same gate speed he had in North America, he would have led the Inter-Dominion final. And Tiger Tara would have been sitting parked outside him. He would have finished 100 metres behind him. Yeah. Trying that game. So it's, it's, it's very easy to see this and be full of emotion. And I'm full of admiration for Tiger Tara. How could you not be? He's a wonderful horse. But Lazarus is a champion, and Tiger Tara doesn't get to be a champion because he's at 102 starts, and he's won 37 of them. So he's lost 75 of them, or something like that. Something, the, the, yeah. the numbers are big enough. He's lost 67 of them. He's lost about two-thirds of the starts he's had. You don't get to be a champion doing that. No. So... Uh, I understand the emotion, I, I, and he's, he, what he's doing is wonderful. Gregory, it's as simple as this. These horses aren't that good. No. Well, the Fix is a pretty good horse. Yep. He's not a great New Zealand Cup winner. The rest of them are good horses. But the indicator to how good an open-class crop is this, and we'll get into this later in the show. You take the horses who are running second and thirds in the great races behind these horses, how do they go when they go back into their own grades? Well, Dream About Me ran third in that New Zealand Cup and can't win mares races. She's no certainty to win those. The fixer is always going to be beatable because he's not a great horse. He's a very, very good horse. And then horses like, like our Uncle Sam go back to Bathurst and get beat. So last year when Lazarus was winning these races, he was beating Tiger Tara, Chicago Bull, and yes, Tiger Tara beat Chicago Bull in the Victoria Cup, but Lazarus frequently beat him. And before that, Smolder. And Lenny the Shark. So that's what makes you a champion. What Tiger Tara is doing now makes him a great, great horse. But he's not a champion. Let's hear what his driver, Todd McCarthy, had to say about him. Well, Todd, that looked a lot like the Inter-Dominion pacing final. Did it feel the same? Similar, probably a little bit faster, but uh, no, nah, he was terrific and he ran well. 
been a remarkable effort for Kevin to keep peaking this horse for the really big races. Do you think maybe he's training him slightly differently because he doesn't seem quite as screwed down for some of the lead-up races anymore? I think he's as, as time's gone on, he's got to know this horse a lot better. And, um, you know, in, in them easier races, we try and look after him as best as we can now, and then we can really sort of open him up on the big ones. And um, this season and, and late last season, Kev's just had him screwed down to a T each every time. So he's um, we couldn't have asked for any more from him tonight. A little bit like Lazarus, I think people think he's a better stayer and therefore not a truly natural miler. Has he improved enough, Tiger Tara, that he can still win a Miracle Mile, or is it not really his race? I, I think so. He, I mean, he, he not, like his last start, he got home in, I think it was 26-1 uh, or something, and that's pretty much him screwed down as, as fast as he can go. And I think he's, uh, to me, he feels like he's, he's a little bit faster than what he was probably two seasons ago. Um, He's getting off the gate a lot quicker than he was, and he seems to be a quicker horse. Even though he's staying so well, I do think he's going to be very competitive come Eric Mile time. What do you think the improvement has come down to? Is it better training? Is the horse stronger? Or is it simply the fact that Lazarus isn't here anymore? He's not just the better still lot. They just get better as they get older, don't they? He's, um, no, he's been terrific. I, I think he's... He's definitely better this season than he's been uh, any other season. And, and driving the horse, he feels a lot stronger and faster, like I said. He's just, I think, you know, and Kev's probably sort of worked him right out now as well. Like I said, he, he gets him spot on every single time now, and he's doing a terrific job with him, and it makes my job easy, that's for sure. It's hard to not talk about Lazarus when you talk about Tiger Tara. They've been racing for such a long time. The version of Tiger Tara you have now a couple of times last season into Dominions here in the Hunter Cup, Lazarus sat parked outside you and beat you. Do you think you'd be more chance of holding him off now than you were then? I think so. Yeah, I think he's definitely a stronger horse now and it'd be good if Lazarus was still around. We'd have a little bit of a battle off now, but um, yeah, it'd be very interesting because he does feel it certainly to me like he is a stronger horse. Pretty measured, his response there, I thought. Todd McCarthy, he, he's not a rah-rah type of fella, but he's a very good horseman. Outstanding horseman. He's been a huge part of this process because he's looked after the horse in the lead-up races. I think last year they went to the well too many times, like they were too frenetic. And I think Kevin's learnt from that. He didn't go to Perth this year. Um, he hasn't been quite as hard on the horse. And that's why his lead-up run at Menangle to that race was like a 152 mile. So they're learning that they don't need to gut him every race and by peaking him for certain races. And the barrier draws are helping, there's no doubt about that. He's drawn the front line in the three big ones. So look, it, what he's doing is fantastic. Oh, he, he's a, as I said before, he's not a champion, but he's a warrior and he, he's the sort of horse it's impossible not to love. But I also think it's important in our job to try and give some perspective to what you're seeing. A bit seeing. of balance, yeah. Well, they're just, as I said, you take him out of that race. I love doing this to compare what I'm seeing in my mind. Take him out of that race, and our Uncle Sam's bolted in the Hunter Cup. Yeah. And then you just go, this feels rubbish. Buster Brady was good, I thought, in fifth position. Uh, let's... Uh, well, and, and let's sum that up. Buster yep. Brady over here wouldn't have been favourite for the Ashburton Cup. Probably not. He wouldn't, he, uh, wouldn't, he wouldn't have. have. No. no chance. He did finish fifth in the New Zealand Cup, but it was a long way behind uh, Lazarus. OK, let's hear from Mark Purden and get their thoughts. Well, pretty hard to make excuses for either of your horses there. Tiger Tara was too good. Yeah, absolutely. Mickey just kept rolling all the way and uh, we couldn't get near him. Did either of them underperform or was it just one of those nights where being wide on the track at that speed was impossible? Yeah, I'd have to go back and have a look at the race. And I, I am disappointed, but, uh, you know, going back and having a look at the race and, and, and just working out the fractions and what they've run and maybe the early work just take, took its toll. OK, would they head to Sydney still, Mark, or will you see how they come through things before deciding on a Miracle Mile campaign? Uh, they're being better tonight, and, and the vet will give us uh, her opinion tonight of how they are. And, you know, OK, the four-year-olds, um, Ashley Lokaz was good, but didn't have a lot of racing luck at Menangle. Um, Chase Auckland looked like he improved. Yes, yes, I thought he would, Mick. I, I didn't think he'd win first up, but... Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, I was a bit dubious about him winning tonight, but he was good enough to win tonight, so he's on target. Looking forward to Sydney. Um, I'll be still expecting to see both the dream about me and Ali, Ali Mac there after their Addington failures, or is that up to what happens next start at Addington? Yeah, it'll be what happens next start. Clearly they were disappointing on the night, so we'll get a blood taken early next week and see if that can give us any answers. 
You must be looking forward to getting ultimate sniper there, an unbeaten horse, and getting him over there because at the moment it's uh, it's hard to find big winners. Absolutely, yeah, and um, yeah, you need, just need to be the best. Well, Stephen, that was nowhere near the best version of him. <laughs> no, that's right, Mick. It was actually, um, yeah, it was terrible, to be fair. I know the, the way the race was run didn't suit the back markers, but he never got home at all. Um, talking to Tony, it sounds like he, he might have got a little bit keen early in the race, and there is a little bit of a chance that he didn't choke down, but he might have actually cut his wind off a bit. So maybe an answer as to why he didn't finish off the race. But we've had him checked out, and he's checked out A-OK. -okay. So Sydney would still be a go at this stage? At this stage, Sydney is still a go. And thanks for picking up those interviews, because uh, it basically gave us what we all thought. They underperformed the Kiwis quite dramatically, and um, Tiger Tara overperformed, probably all got to his absolute optimum. Yeah, and there's no... The flip side to the conversation we're having about Tiger Tower is <clears throat> there's no point just making excuses and, oh, we got the visitor's draws. That's all rubbish. Yeah. This visitor's draw stuff's for children. There's no visitor's draws. If you draw badly and you draw Tiger Tower drew the second line of the New Zealand Cup, I mean, sometimes you just don't get a good draw. And it wouldn't have mattered. We weren't good enough. Once he led, once this field... I think we said this on the show last week. Once he led, this race was over. Yeah. It was just a matter of what he was going to win by. It was bizarre. The, the barrier draw um, came out. It was $1.55. He, but he, he got, got the massive grass. Got the, and you know what it was? <laughs> the blows all started because people were running around. It was a very bizarre experience being at Melbourne the other night. People were running around and saying, I read on the All-Stars website that Mark and Ed are going to attack. I said, attack what? <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to attack Tiger Tara? I said they're going to move earlier in the race. Than what they did in the Inter-Dominion because it didn't work in that so they tried something different. And I said it's simple mathematics. The best horse in the race is going to cover 20 metres less than the fixer. Hmm. Uh, look, I get lots of things wrong but that was so glaringly obvious. But the drift, and it shows you how often these drifts come from this sort of thought process. And it was like adults were running around and saying this to me and I was like... I just went and had a hot dog. I would just flat, flat <laughs> you the gas. Had a hot dog. I know. I needed something there, Gregory. <laughs> nice. It was a, it was a truly weird experience to be there to see so many horses perform badly, to see one horse go great, and then to see a whole lot of people forget that Lazarus or Blacks are fake, are fake existed. This time last year, we were having a conversation this exact week whether Lazarus was one of the greats of all time, and I remember saying to people, "Look, he's not as good as." as Cardigan Bay. That's, that's him. That's him over there. Mm. I said, he's not as good as Cardigan Bay, so it's calmed the emotion down. And then, of course, a month later, he gets beaten the Miracle Mile. So, oh, I was overrated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and poor old Tiger Tara might face the same thing. Um, as I said, yeah. pers perspective comes to doing it for a long time. And I, I respect fans and the buzz they get from it. But there's too many goats in sport and racing for me. There's too many <laughs> greatest of all times. You know, there's too many Bowden Barrett's better than Dan Carter's and... Yep. You know, there's only one. You just get a bit over it, don't well, you? Greco, yeah. there's only one Don Bradman. There's only one Michael Jordan. You don't need to reinvent everybody to be better. And Tiger Tara sure as hell isn't Cardigan Bay. So yep. everybody can just take a breath. We'll, we'll, we'll know more after the Miracle Mile. We head to the Miracle Mile. Now, the news is he's going to be retired at the end of the season. So he won't be coming back to New Zealand. And in that form, a lot of people will be happy not to see him back in New mm. Zealand. Um, unfortunately for racing fans, they would love to see him back at Addington. But whether that happens, I would have thought at the start of the season he would stand at 2,500, Greg. I would think after the season he's He might had, be up to five. He might be up to five. Yeah, he could be. Hey, if you enjoy Dan Malecki's call, uh, why don't you send us in your favourite race call of all time? Uh, send it in to us at tab.co.nz, uh, the box seat at tab.co.nz, and, um, yeah. Have you got one? I've got a couple. Um, the 86 Cox Plate always stands out for yep. me. Waverley Star and Bone Crusher. To totally it, it is extremely hard to beat. Funnily enough, a couple of Dan Maleki's calls, um, Courage Under Fire and Lyle Creek, when they both got beaten. Courage Under Fire, the world had ended, I think, and Lyle Creek, when uh, Sunny Action beat it in the free-for-all at Addington Raceway. They were a couple of amazing calls. Ki Kiwi's uh, Melbourne Cup. Melbourne Cup. A and Sunline, when she won the Hong Kong Mile, the Mayor of the Year call. That yep. was, I think I hear a lot of calls. I watch a lot of replay, so I hear a lot of replay calls. Yes. So I don't hear them at race day, but Mark McNamara well, says well, some his, very his monkey, smart things. His monkey king, you yeah. can play it again, Sam, yeah. which I never heard on the day. And I just sat there and I thought, 
You bloody smart ass. Yeah. How did you come up with yeah. that in the last 50 years? And, and the Chautauqua call when he won the TJ Smith when he came from the Impossible Nowhere. Place. Yeah. So I think a lot of them were here at replay, but the Gallops races I watch a lot more for fun, so I'm more likely to hear those calls than I am to hear the harness calls. But mm. if, if you have a call you yeah, really like, get it, it might get involve it into your us. own horse. Yeah, so do. Maybe we won't give it a run. We'll chuck them on there. All right, let's get into the uh, Dullard Cup. Of course, Group 1 level for the Trotters, $50,000. Uh, Temperale enjoyed a pretty economical trip. Pulls to the outside here, but the winner was getting a sweet trip in the trail. Temperale winding up. Big Jack Hammer in behind them. It's Save Our Pennies. Here comes Temperale. Temperale goes up on the outside. Big Jack Hammer gets the run. Big Jack Hammer coming through. And Big Jack Hammer, Kima Frenning. Take the group one and beat Save Our Pennies and Temperale in a photo. Went 12 in his career. Went back through his last 20 odd starts. He'd only That was only his third win. So he doesn't win out of turn, Michael, but with the trail in that race in the absolute perfect spot. I said to you on your show on Saturday night via the phone from Melton, I thought this stacked up as a sucker race for punters because Save Our Pennies was going to lead but hadn't been very good the week before. And Temperale. As a horse who's always beatable, he, he's very good in front, but I didn't think he'd get the lead. And I spoke to Tony Hurley post-race, and Tony said he should have won. He had his chance, maybe the week before, took a bit out of him, but he had his chance. He loomed up, but once he didn't lead, it was a different type of race. And the trailer, so often in these even tight fields, is going to win. It's a trotting crop we know is in a, a state of flux. The best Mark Cooler might be the best of them, alongside the best Tornado Valley. Neither. What's the latest on Tornado race. Valley? Have you got any update there? Um, spoke to Andy last week. They're more than happy to wait for the next bunch of races. There'll be no elite lot for him, so some people are trying to talk about going to the elite loppet, but he won't be going to that. So here's Temporale pulling to the outside. Still a very successful campaign for him over there, a second and third at the highest levels. But he's yet to win in Australia. I think he won there as a three-year-old, didn't he? Mm. He might have won as a three or in a minor he, race. He, he might have done. But yeah, in one of the features. Yeah, he's no, been no. placed in six or seven yeah, yeah. at group level, he, he which, which he, is a terrific record, but... I agree. He he just, uh, he's, he's a very, very good horse, Temporale. And there's a lot of very good horses. Like We'll see great things happen later on in this crop. Yeah. And Mark Cool is better than them when he's right. But again, it's like the paces. You know, these, these, the Mon Bays and the Lyle Creeks and the I Can Do's just don't come along that often, Greg. And maybe that's why you should enjoy them, because once, for example, once Winx is retired, probably in April, we're going to go looking for a new champion for next year's Cox Plate. You could be waiting for a wee while. Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly right. And it's very easy. To, you, you leave these places and you are full of adrenaline, so you want to say that this is as good as that. But... Surely we can't be right all the time about this sort of stuff. Isn't it nice just sometimes to go to a just race where you can say... Just enjoy it. Now, yeah. This young lady on screen has become one of my favourite people in harness racing because Kima Frenning is... She's a very friendly, fun, charming girl. I went to the other day and I said, Oh, you're doing so well. Kima's coming great. She No talk about me, this and her, that. She said, oh, I just Always want to the th horses. She said, I want to thank Mr Aiken for all the drives he's given me and, and I want to thank all the trainers who look after me. She goes, I came out here from Sweden... I didn't know anybody out here and I've been looked after really well. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Quite refreshing. Yeah. Just a, a really good pin-up girl for the industry because she's got the big, big cheesy smile, but she's just a nice, friendly, fun person. And she doesn't come with a last name, which has given her any entitlement, which sometimes harness racing does. But she also doesn't come with any baggage in that regard. So she's not... You know, my family's always hated that family. There's no none of that uh, stuff going on. So yeah, she's been a breath of fresh air in Victorian harness racing. She certainly has been. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have a look at a Kiwi success there uh, at Melton, and we'll head to Menangal as well. Still plenty to come on your boxing.
Welcome back into your box seat. Let's go and have a look at some Kiwi success out of Melton on Saturday night. She's a dual Group 1 winning mare, as we know, utmost delight, and she had to be quite exceptional here, Michael, sitting parked, and, gee, she was brave. I thought she was beaten on the home turn. I spoke to Greg Sugars after the race, and he was confident she was going to get there. Uh, as you can see, not by much. Up the shadow rain, ample power the outside, a great three way go. Utmost delight might have got up on the line. The favourite from Shadow Rain who refused to yield. Lucky the winning post sort of on a bend there because it didn't appear like she was going to get up. But when you line up the uh, line across the track, she gets there by that. And Greg Sugars sort of timed it to a nicety. I don't think City Park was really her go, but. Look, it's a, it's a good win against the B-grade free-for-allers. They, they aren't, by any means, obviously, the good free-for-allers because most of those were in the Hunter Cup, but it's still a mare beating the boys predominantly, and she'll head to those mares races. And a little bit after the race, I caught up with Stephen Reid. Look, that was really brave from her to beat the boys, considering that's her, not her natural racing style. Yeah, I think you're right, Mick. Um, I think she's a better mare when she follows, and I think she's also a better mare when they go hard. Uh, but, you know, the racing is the racing, and um, I thought she was beat turning in. Greg Sugars gave her a good rap. He said he always thought he was going to win it. So, uh, look, I think it's when she gets to an angle on the big track, mile racing, they go hard. I think it's going to suit her. Those Mears races look pretty open. Uh, obviously, two of the All-Stars, really good Mears, who beat you at Addy, uh, Alexandra Park, were beaten last night at Addington. Um, there's no champion Mears in Australia, with Amarito and Golden Goddess being retired. You're in with the shot here. Yeah, absolutely. Look, she's she's just never stopped to amaze me, this mare. She's getting better and better. I, I honestly think that next year, as a six-year-old, she'll be a genuine Grand Circuit horse. Uh, that remains to be seen, but that's my feeling at this stage. I just want to get to Sydney. Uh, I want to get in those races where they go hard and we can drive her for a sit. OK, that raises the question. Who drives in Sydney? Because Greg Sugars is a Victorian. Does he come to Sydney with the horse? I actually don't know that. I'll be, um, I'll have a conversation with Paula Mary Kenny about that and we'll make our decision after that. But, um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know, Mick. Yeah, she's a, she's a very, very good mare. We saw that last year, of course, winning the Group 1 Breeders, which is, of course, less than a fortnight away at Addington now. And 54-4 uh, sitting park, that's about as good as you need to go. Yeah, and this mare's grade's become incredibly open. I mean, she's at least as good as the rest of them. And Amaretto and Golden Goddess, who were the two best mares in Australia, have been retired. Carla's Pixel's come back and was really good last start, but... She's not unbeatable, of course. And then the mares races we're going to see at Addington, our two supposed top mares, both massively underperformed. And therefore, they're in danger of not going to the Ladyship Mile. Now, that's March the 2nd at Menangle. This horse is going to go there. She's fit. She's showing toughness to add to that string to her bow, which she has with speed. There's lots and lots of positives. Who drives her at Menangle will be interesting because Greg Sugars is Victorian, but he drives well everywhere. So whether he would stay on her or whether they want a local driver from there, um, she's she's in that race really up to her eyeballs. Uh, th those Menangle races are going to be incredibly even because the four-year-olds are very deep. The Miracle Mile has no dominant favourite because Tiger Tar is yet to win in sub-149 for a mile. And the mares races are getting incredibly even. So I think it's a carnival at the moment, Greg. We were getting out of one carnival, looking into the next, and it's like, gee, there's a lot of unexpected things here. Whereas often the carnival will have odds-on favourites for you know, a whole bunch of races. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see what happens at Menangle, which actually starts this Friday at Newcastle, of all places. Yeah, it does. Because the Newcastle miles near 100k. And guaranteed winner into the Miracle Mile. With a bit of a trick. Yes. There's a horse called Picard in the race, and if Picard <laughs> wins the Newcastle Mile, its connections have to choose between the Miracle Mile and, and the, the Chariots of Fire. They can't start them both. So they've got to choose one over Why the other. Why would you have a clause like that? Well, it's to protect the race. It means that it, otherwise the Newcastle Mile winner could then start in any race they want in between. Yeah, run, but they're not going to. Run because two eighths and then it... it yeah. Well, it's, it's relatively common around the world. For example, if you, if a lot of people probably don't know this, but if you get invited by the VRC to contest the Cox Plate, or the Moody, Moody Valley run the Cox Plate, or say the VRC invited you to contest a Melbourne Cup, 
and they agree to pay the freight, they say we're paying 80000 to have you there if you're invited. Or to Japan Cup, where they pay all your expenses. If we invite you, you can't start before. You can't come to the country and have a lead up run. No. You've got to come and yep. run. So the Miracle Mile invites. It's, it's based, I sort of get it's that. It's based around protecting the race. Yeah, but if you won Newcastle, started in the chariots, won that, then that's a wonderful well, flagship a, going. Again, but the problem with that is... Go back two years ago to when you had a dominant four-year-old, say Christian Cullen or Lazarus. Yep. So you go to Newcastle and you win, you go to the Chariots of Fire and you win, and that means two automatic qualifying races for the Miracle Mile, one with the same horse. Mm. So does that mean that the, that's, ho- that's why they the do horse it. who runs fourth in one of the lead-up races gets in? Is that Whereas what they're trying to do is have the Newcastle Mile winner goes in, the two lead-up winners go in, and the Chariots of Fire winner, so they bring them forth. They're trying to protect their own race. Is it right or wrong? I don't really particularly care, but it's not. This isn't the only race in the world it happens with. A lot of those major races, when the elite lop's the perfect example for harness racing people. If you go to the elite lop and they pay your freight to go and you are invited, you are not allowed to start beforehand unless they want you to. Because what happens is, if you start and get your ass kicked, the promotional machine goes, well, we wasted all that money on you. Let's have a look at this horse, Picard. See, we're talking about him a lot. This is in the Hondo Grattan, so this is a guaranteed uh, straight into the Chariots of Fire. You're looking for the Kiwi, uh, Ashley Lokaz, who's currently three back on the fence and getting badly held up. 1-1 one, one is Hale Christian. Watch his last 100 metres. Plenty to like about that extreme outside but it's still Picard packing plenty Ashley Lokaz gets into the clear spots at three third quarter 26 and four it's Picard leading the Black Prince Ashley Lokaz is trying to wind up with Hale Christian the leader still Picard Ashley Lokaz is going to make one last close Picard still in front close to home and Picard Picard goes home to beat Ashley Lokaz third home in the race notice we'll wide out there horse called Ignatius now you'll be able to tell us more about him he he ran home incredibly Incredibly fast, like 52-2 or 52-3, shows you how hard it is to make ground up when the leader Pickard was going as fast as what uh, he was. Uh, but the two Kiwi second and third, a lot of merit about both of them. Yeah, very much so. The, often leading in those mile races um, is crucial at an angle. And Pickard, of course, is a stable mate with Kevin Pizzuto of Tiger Tara. So Look Kevin's at his early speed slide. here. And they've all got gate speed. That's the key with the Pizzuto horses. They just teach them to run off the gate and and most New Zealand horses don't have it, and that's why Ashley Lokaz is three back on the inside. How often would Lauren Tritton drive for Kevin Bazuto? Uh, no, ag- agreed. Much like the jockey situation in New Zealand at the moment, people were needing to go everywhere to fill into the gaps because Todd McCarthy was away, and they're trying to find the right people for the right horses. This is right up here, really. So um, he's a vastly improved horse. Two starts ago, he won and paid $22 in the Chase Auckland race. He's a factor. I don't think he'll win at uh, Newcastle on Friday night because his stable mate Major Dan probably will. And he finished second behind um, the rejuvenated horse. The uh, ten-year-old. Ma- Maxi Man. Maxi Man. Well, the mm. irony is, let's be blunt about this. If Picard doesn't need to win because he's guaranteed a Miracle Mile spot and can't win this, then go to both the Chariots and the Miracle Mile, isn't the, the connection's going to want Major Dan to win and Picard not? That's pretty simple stuff. It's pretty straightforward so stuff. So <laughs> if you're betting into the Newcastle race, you want to be backing Major Dan. Yeah, I think you And do. you don't want to be backing Picard. That just makes sense. Um, Ch- uh, Chase Auckland. Uh, Chase Auckland also raced, but by the way, Ashley Lokas was outstanding, yeah. so he can still win. And, of course, Spankham's going to come across this week too to race Chase Auckland. So He's drawn wide out, though, Chase Auckland to... Um, the yeah. Tiger Pie the next, horse, the, what's he called? Uh, uh, rack rack up, up Tiger, tiger pie. pie. He's got barrier one. Yeah, so look, it's they're not easy racing these four-year-olds. They're all sub-150 horses when they feel like it. So even though Spankham's been good all summer, um, Chase Auckland, this is a 2,300 metre race and it wasn't a very good field. And He worked Ch- to the lead a lap out. He just he got given the lead, mm. you know. So it, he's still a little bit below his peak, but he's peaking at the right time. He's $1.80 favourite to win the lead-up this week. If he wins that, he's going to be going into the Chariot's fourth up. Do you still reckon that's maybe one short? I I reckon the more hard mile racing you do at Menangle, the better. He's a wonderful horse. There's no question. And this was a soft kill for him. 2,300 metre races at Menangle always suit New Zealand horses better than the miles. 
the miles get our horses out of their comfort zone. The 2300, they go a lot slower early like we do here. And our records, our strike rate over 2300 compared to the miles at my angle was just vastly different. So how much he, bring, he comes on from last week will be different. Also the other thing too is Mark and Natalie, particularly Mark is moving to Sydney now with these horses and while Paul is doing a great job with them, you're still going to have a situation where Mark is going to have his hands on these horses a lot in the next three weeks. Natalie might come home next week to A, look at some yearlings and B, try and screw down those two mares we'll see later for the second of the mares double coming out of Addington. In fact, we'll see them very shortly. We're about to take a break here on your box seat when we come back. Time to get into the domestic action, including the Group 2 Garrard's Premier Mares. Let's go to Addington Raceway from uh, Friday night. Group 2 level it was. Uh, the Garrard's Premier Mears. Well, the way things panned out, about here you would have thought, yeah, the All-Stars should run 1-2. But as Mark McNamara will explain to us, that did not happen. De Barber's wider out. Dream about me's being hard driven here. Mostale Rose, De Barber come at it now. De Barber's gone to the top from Mostale Rose and step up and dream about me and De Barber. The Barber won it from Mostale Road. Well, off the back of a very good performance last week, she's clearly improved, got a beautiful run tonight, and she was too good. Yeah, no, Stephen's run really good, and he, she hasn't improved since last week, and uh, pretty wrapped to beat them tonight. Right, you won the Southland Oaks, but it hasn't been all beer and skittles in between times, has it? No, she came back after that, and I didn't know what was wrong with her, and uh, we found out one night John Dunn was, fo I was following John Dunn, and he said, oh, your horse wasn't breathing, mate, so uh, better we wind off, and she's just a different horse since, so, no, pretty cool. But it's a bit of a story behind this as well. You purchased her at the sales. You could have ended up with her yourself, but um, you got some pretty good owners involved. Yeah, and no, I got passed in, so we went and had a look at it, and we bought it ourselves. And then uh, we seen Ray in, at the swimming pool and uh, said, do you want a horse? He said, rightio. So, yeah, it could have been mine, but no, they've got owners, so they've got another one, another full brother coming to us, so that's good. All right. Safely through tomorrow and, and, you know, the days after this race, she should only improve again going forward towards the, uh, the Group 1, the Breeders. Yeah, she's pretty in big condition too, Greg, so I'm thinking she will get better and better over time, so, and distance won't worry, because the Southland Oaks was 2.7, so, no, she's got a good chance, because it's a good run. Right. Off the back of winning 200 races, getting that racked up, of course, at Mata Carrara, you've now got yourselves another Group 2 victory with her, so congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Greg, I hope you get a Group 1 next fortnight. I reckon they'll go pretty close. She's, she's improving all the time. It's a good family, though. Ideal and Diamonds uh, is out of that breed. And Imola, who started the New Zealand Cup, and it actually goes back to Peter van der Louis, Smarty Pants and yeah. van der Rel. And, and, and they were horses who set really quick times by that standards back about the late 80s, early yeah. 90s. They were a very popular family at the sales, which is remarkable to think that this horse got passed in at 10. So, yeah, surprising there was no love for her. She, she's a wonderful filly. I'm really, uh, me and now, I'm really happy for, for Terry and Glennis because, you know, these horses aren't easy to come by and these races aren't easy to come by. I wasn't on track, Rick, I was on a plane, but I imagine it was an enormously popular victory oh, absolutely. In, the, in the stabling. Area. Absolutely it was, but let, let's just put things to one side here. Michael, they went... 229.3. There were five other 1980 metre races on the day. JB Mooney went about 227. The two-year-old Copperfield went 226. 
Majestic Hurricane, who's in a different gate, went 228. I've already told you he's a smart, he went 225. And the maiden, Georgia's Baron, and Georgia's Baron in the last, broke 227. So, Tim Williams is in front, he's worked to the lead, and they've run the first half of the last mile in about 64 seconds. Now you've been saying all season, and quite rightly I believe, that dream about me, she's not going, or she, she seems to have lost her speed. Well, driving her to run a 26 second last quarter when she's lost her speed, it's, it's not a bagging of Tim, but I think he hurt. I think with the best horse in the race is in front, and it gets run over the top, there's no excuses regardless. Oh, oh. Well, Ali Mack, who sat in the trail as well, she showed she went a 151 mile rate at Alexandra Park. Mm. Now, Johnny Cox has taken the trail, so he, it's, he can't do anything about the speed that's going on in front of him, but the two best stars were lead trail, two best stars mm. mares in the race, and, and it's been turned into a sprint home. Now, she was coming back at the line dream about me, but DeBarber just had too much speed for well, her. When I was telling people back in October that she didn't have any more change-up speed left, and I was actually getting abused. But You did get abused. What, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't... The facts of... Horses are just horses. They don't have emotions about online stuff. They don't care what you say about them. <laughs> I've never had a horse ring and abuse me. When you state facts, you're doing it because people at home have bills and you don't want to rip them off. Well, you that's know. why I gave you those five other and, 1980 races. To give you an example, they she, all beat the time they went. She's lost her speed. And punters deserve to know that if they want to back her. It doesn't change the horses. What a wonderful horse Could she been. win the Group 1? Of course, of course Absolutely she could. She could. I, I, I'll defend him. I, I don't think it matters how fast or slow he went. So she, you don't believe he earned in that race? Uh, or, or put it this way, looking at it now, yeah, maybe going faster might have helped because she lost anyway. But I think she was poor. Right. I just think she was okay. poor. And the natural inclination is to go, well, mark a natter away so these boys have stuffed the training up. Oh, yeah. But so how did the two-year-olds go? Exactly. One, two, the three. Two went one, two, how did three. enhance your calm and it, cheerful go? Exactly. The next day, the, 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 the two-year-olds, uh, three-year-old trotters at Jewelling were very good. So it's not that. It's almost like these two mares gave each other a virus or they just got together and said, we're not going to try tonight. It, it was, it's one of those weird Twilight Zone races. But I almost don't want to talk about that because... The these, DeBarber things. These things happen. Yep. Good luck to the DeBarber people. This is their moment. This is their group too. They got what they deserved. They weren't scared of taking on the All-Stars. They weren't scared of, you know, driving their horse 1-1 one, one and, and, and not ducking to the fence. Good on them. This is their win. The All-Stars horses didn't go good enough and who cares. When I look back on this in years to come, I'll be happy for all the people involved with DeBarber because without those people, there would be no All-Stars and there would be no Tiger Taras. In fact, this show wouldn't exist. Yep, fair enough. Mostar Rose, I thought, was very good uh, in second. Great things happen. Back-to-back -back wins uh, for uh, him. He found the front in this small field and Bell's son had to do a power of work to actually get the lead and, well, he just outstayed them. He's never really comfortable to watch, is he? Because he's got that weird gait. But gee, he must be a brave horse. And I, I, I admire Gavin for what he's doing with the horse because these horses aren't as good as him and he's, he's beating them. But it must be such a battle to get him to the races every week. He, I hope he gets another group one. But look at his gait there. He's, he's, he's not comfortable. He's 16 a, from 38 he, He's a very flawed, very good horse. But gee, he must have a motor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he was too good there and he's up towards 230,000 now. And Well, he's got uh, a couple of other decent races still to come before. How much did you say he's made? 230,000. That goes to show you how hard it is to make a quid in racing. Like if a horse costs you 20000 a year to have in training, which is a, probably about right, and he's been in training for five years, I presume, that's a hundred k. So, you know, you need to be a very, very good horse to be making money because trainers and drivers get percentages of that. So you would say, you know, there's not a lot of top end for a horse who's won a group one out of that. So he's... Uh, the obvious fact of being is that he hasn't been able to get consistent racing. Mm. Once you can consistently race at the top end, or ironically consistently race in any trot at Alexandra Park where the stakes are high, you can make a lot of money. But for a very, very good horse, he hasn't won a lot of money because of those issues Gavin's had to fight with him. Just want to go back to DeBarba. Uh, Jimmy Tennant, Colin Tennant uh, and Ray Seebeck, they've had a good run lately, particularly uh, Colin Tennant. He 
races did you bring the beers and a couple of other horses that have been winning too so uh, good on you it's uh, great to see you getting some success uh, new CEO at Addington Raceway took the opportunity on Friday night to catch up with him yeah, I've been at Addington for the past seven years. I uh, really enjoyed my position as a GM of operations and I'm ready to step up in the next role. You know, we've got a great team here. We've already got a good management team in place. Um, we've got a supportive board and I've also worked with some great CEOs in the past that I've learnt from, so I'm really looking forward to the challenge. This racetrack is world renowned, Australasian's best no doubt. That must give you great confidence going forward, particularly with a couple of major events uh, on the calendar. Yeah, we've got the Harness Jewels coming up in the start of June. And look, John Denton, you know, I have great faith in John Denton, he's the best in the business, so it's good from that um, perspective and I leave the track to John and he gets it done. And I understand that you have a new major sponsor for the first ever Jewels at Addington too. Yeah we're looking forward to having the opportunity to host the Jewels, it's for the first time here at Addington and we're really excited about to be able to announce that IRT they will be the um, overall uh, partner with us for the day and have exclusive naming rights. You know, Richard Cole and the team have been great supporters of the industry and of Addington and I'll be looking forward to working with Richard and this team throughout bringing the Harness event uh, which is iconic for South Island, North Island New Zealand. You're excited about this opportunity aren't you? Yeah, it's a great, op great opportunity and I'm excited about it but uh, I suppose the best thing about it is just showing that support to the industry and showing other people what Addington can do and bringing other people to Addington. You know, it's a great opportunity for the biggest global uh, race rating company to be associated with an uh, iconic event. So I'm like, super excited. And of course, speaking of events, there's none bigger than New Zealand Cup Carnival being the operations manager around that. You've got great integral knowledge about that. So um, again, 2019, uh, the New Zealand Cup Carnival is another very important time. Yeah, we always look at making a better event each year. We've had a great reputation for the, the event. Um, I think the best thing about that and the major, I suppose the major highlight is the support we've got from the agencies and all the um, uh, stuff we've put in about the liquor licensing and the support we've got to to make it a, a credible day. Yeah. Well Brian congratulations on the appointment, looking forward to working with you especially around those two major events and all the very best. Yeah cheers Greg I'd just like to finish by saying thanks to IRT for their ongoing support and we look forward to working with Richard Cole and his team and I'm bringing a great Harness Jewels to Addington. Cheers. He's a good fella. He, he'll do a good job there. He has the support, full support of the staff. He's been there for seven or eight years, as you heard, and uh, uh, look, I, I'm sure that he'll do well. Couple of things. First of all, great to see a major naming sponsor for the jewels this far out. Um, and IRT are a big brand. They're a well-known brand, and, and they're a, a well-trusted brand. So people go, OK, that's cool. I know who they are, and that's a good fit for Addington. And secondly, and, and be honest at home, and, and let's, when you saw... Brian there for the first time, and I'd never seen him before. Did you not think of Mick Hutnell from Simply Red? I've always called him Simply Red, but I can't do that now because he's well, the boss. It's, <laughs> so, that's, 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 we can call him what you want. Actually, that's I called cool. him Mick and he said, don't call me they Mick, you can me, call me Mr Hucknell. <laughs> they tell me Mick Hucknell was very popular with the ladies. Some people like the red hair. But yeah. anyway, that's what I thought. Of. I've never seen Brian before, but yep. yes. Nah, he's a good man. He'll can, do. can he see? Um, oh, I haven't asked him, but... Um, we should find out. Let's hope that... <laughs> Yeah, OK. Hey, but well done to, uh, to them getting a sponsor. And, and as the IRT is a good fit for the jewels. And it actually rolls off the tongue. Like if it was Bob's Funeral Home Jewels, it becomes a bit, you know. But the IRT jewels, because I'm actually thinking more and more about when I write about it all the time to stop calling it the Harness Jewels. Everybody knows it's the Harness Jewels. Mm. It's like it's not called the Thoroughbred Caracamillion. So... Yeah. yeah, anyway, the IRT jewels that will be at Addington. Other really important news out of Southland, uh, Jason Broad had this to say about new stake increases. From today onwards, every maiden race will be for $10,000 through to the end, end of season, so that's from 8000 to 10000 So it's a good thing for the industry, for the owners, breeders, and, you know, it's, uh, yeah, we're just looking forward to uh, the rest of the season anyway to help everyone out. And I know it's something that um, Southland Harness um, have been working on quite hard through the season, uh, and I guess culminating in this announcement. Yeah, it has. Well, you know, we've done all our series, our gold tip finals, and our nugget finals, and all that. So you know, they're 20k, and you know, we're sort of just trying to lift our bar up a bit, and you know, it may sort of go through the country. Hopefully, you know, clubs look at their own sort of stakes breakdowns. And it's certainly great for all the local connections. Look, they really don't have to travel, um, do they? Because the stakes are probably um, a little bit better here than anywhere else in the South Island right now.
Well, I'd like to think they are. You know, we've got four tracks in close proximity, so that's, that's a factor that may come into trainers that they don't need to travel, but, you know, we're not going to deter anyone from travelling as well, so, uh, you know, they've got horses for, for courses, you know, practically, but no, there's a good reason to stay in Southland. And, um, and of, of, of course, the Super Nugget, um, the Super Gold Chip, um, still very popular amongst trainers? Yeah, it has been. You know, the last few uh, finals have been a bit smaller, but um, no, it's been a good concept and it's been well supported. And we've just had out of Barron Park from Australia come on board to sponsor the uh, Super Gold Chip, which is the trotting one in uh, April for it's a 20k race. So, yeah, we think they're sponsorship and they're looking for a long term thing. But, uh, you know, f for his part of his sponsorship, we're also promoting uh, the Teal you know, the ovarian cancer, which he's a very big part of. So uh, we're doing that on the 9th of March, which is Northern Southland's, Northern Southland's Super Feature Day. So um, it should be a good day for that as well. Gee, there's some exciting days coming up, isn't there? Uh, between Northern Southland Super Feature plus Diamond Day coming up too. And uh, gee, there's no place you'd rather be than, than Southland for the next couple of months. No, and especially with the way the weather is at the moment, it's been uh, fantastic. But, you know, like at Northern Southland Day, there's three group races there and, you know, it's about $200,000 worth of stakes. And, and the, um, the final day, as you mentioned, uh, there's two th races there with 50k and you know, it's about 250,000 stakes. So there's good money on board that we've got there. So, um, you know, we're going to embrace it and... Hopefully, you know, we might get a few people uh, lining up on those big uh, feature races and those days. Said it before, we'll say it again on this show, they continue to uh, bat well above, don't they? Uh, the Southern boys, and now they've upped their stakes at maiden level to that, Michael. It's just another example of it. Well, 10,000 plus... Plus the 1,500, yeah. the 1,500. Yeah. It's about 6,000 to the winner, plus the 1,500. And good on them. I mean, we need Southland to be strong. It's a great exporting place. It's a great breeding place. A place they breed wonderful horses down there, and we've seen that you know the last couple of seasons. So, look, well done to them. I think Jason Broad goes into the industry with enthusiasm, but very practical, and he's trying to build season on season. I think there's some good things happening in Southland harness racing, and I hope they continue. I like the gold finals ideas. I think they're really they good. are working well, yeah, aren't they? They are. Well, there's horses in them. I scan the fields in the morning or during the week and having breakfast in the morning, and you go, OK, I'll, I'm going to watch that today. And if you're going to watch, you're more likely to have a quaddy or a pick six or a bet. If you're not going to watch, you're very, really bet. And I think that's a key factor. You need a race on the day that interests me enough to get involved in the meeting. And I think that's what the gold finals do. So well done to everybody involved in Southland Harness Racing. Let's have a look at what's ahead this week for you. We uh, have the Cambridge meeting with nine races there on Thursday. $25,000 pick six start time there at 5.20. Alexandra Park, uh, a little bit further north, has the Brecon Farms Young Guns Heat uh, 4. It does have the scratching, uh, we'll talk about in a moment, uh, of Perfect Stride and the Neverly R three-year-old series. Heat number one, of which Heat two, will be on Sunday. We'll get to that in a moment too. Gore, they've got the Gore Grass Cup there, four fifty-seven, fifteen thousand dollars, twelve fifteen start time there on Saturday. Sunday it is the Horada Clubs meeting there out at uh, Methven on the Mount Harding, twelve ten start time. That second Neverly R Series heat in that Horada Cup at uh, four fourteen, and then we have uh, the Manawa Two on Tuesday, a twenty thousand dollar terminating pick six. That may well get you interested over your cornies there, uh, Michael. Um, I don't eat cornflakes, but whatever you have, I don't. No, I eat eggs. You eat eggs, do you? Yeah, oh, but twenty thousand yeah. dollars terminating pick six is good. These pick sixes, the smaller ones, need to be terminating. Okay, right on. Uh, feedback. We've had a wee bit too. Good. Uh, let's have a look at some uh, of uh, the information that's been coming through. Uh, Colleen Edmonds. She's not happy with the numbers at Alexandra Park. This is not the first time I've heard this either, Michael. Uh, I, I never look at them. Mm. I must admit, I, I... But you're not watching it from home a lot, are you? You're on track? Uh, well, when, I, when I'm on track, I watch them on television. Mm. I, I just don't look at the numbers. So, um, uh, Colleen, they do I, look like Colleen, the dog I, numbers. I, I'm not yeah. disagreeing with you. I see what they're trying to do, but I never look at the numbers, so I must admit this is not something I think about. I, I am now going to look at them this week to see if they matter to me, but when I'm looking for a horse, I tend to look at its colours. But... I take your point, I'm not saying you're wrong. OK, um, we'll continue with our feedback, because we do ask for it all of the time. Um, here's someone who's not a big racing fan but does like watching the shows, that's all cool. Uh, and we didn't mention football or soccer in the old. Yeah, last, last time we had a conversation about um, other sports giving back to the community, and not only did we mention rugby and league, we didn't mention football. Now, for two reasons this is vastly wrong, as Warren Ramsey points out. It's a huge sport, football, soccer. Secondly, your son Flynn is very good at playing soccer. <laughs> He's OK. But the reason is this. I played soccer once in my entire life when I was about 20 and I was exhausted after 20 minutes and I never played again. 
So we're going to watch soccer from the show <laughs> because it's incredibly tiring. Yeah. But it is the world's biggest game. We should have mentioned it, Warren. You're very, very right. Lots of other sports do contribute to the community, and football is one of those. But it's very, very tiring. All right, have you got... played soccer? Uh, yeah. A lot That's, of running You're running around, around a yes. lot. So I, no, don't I'd play rather a lot. get tackled by I get run around a lot at home now these days. No. Uh, we asked people to come and get involved in the Beat the Brand, and, gee, we got a few in, so uh, we've had to uh, narrow it down to only a couple. Uh, and, of course, it involves, if they beat you, you mowing their lawn. That's Mark Summich, well, who you actually know personally. I, I know Summy, and that's the sort of lawn I'm looking to mow if they beat me. What I was worried that some smart-ass farmer from Southland who had, like, 10,000 <laughs> hectares was going to get me to try a mower's lawn and being a man Somebody might work, get you to that, mow that with a pair of scissors. But. I could probably mow that with a pair of scissors. Um, so, well, so I did who, offer you the right who, on. Who, who, who are our... So Summy's one. Visiting tipsters. And Linda Van Beek, who oh, is a prominent, prominent breeder. Have you got a picture of her lawn? Um, no. She's breeding horses. Her lawn sounds awfully big. She, but she, that's she a story for another day. They're still going to beat us yet. OK, uh, so what about selections for this week then? I'm going with Art Standing, who's a pretty smart three-year-old. He goes to Meffin. I'll be honest, I, I got sick from sitting next to a sick guy on the plane on the way home the other day and have been a pussy all week, so I didn't put any thought into this. I've gone Bella so Montana. Montana, who goes that's around in the So here. Matt Cross has gone for Burlington. Mark McNamara for Strong Enough. Craig, the big man, has gone for Gambit. He's the favourite in the early market to win this competition. Cameron Shaw is now 13. He's gone for Mr Slick at Alexander Park. <laughs> somebody has gone for Dinah Brown. And Linda, welcome to the show, Linda. We look forward to you representing Team Female as well as possibly Team Sensible. And you've gone for Arty Farty at Cambridge, so... Excellent. Mm. Good stuff. And how long does it go for? Uh, so we'll run this over 10 weeks. So it'll be 10 weeks, and then I think we'll have nine of leading of into the jewels. our visiting... Beat you. Tips to, I've got to mow their lawn. Mine, no, and my lawns need mowing, so... Oh, I'm you've got a rod on mower? That's what Mark Max said. Well, if, so if Linda's got a large lawn, can I borrow your rod well, on mower? What about mowing Mark Max? As if Mark Max got to win. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> That's just... Oh, well. Mark Max got more chance of beating me in a slam dunking basketball competition than he has of me beating me in a tipping competition. All right, don't forget to get involved in the team Teal, uh, support them as well. Of course, we had good success over the weekend, a couple of hundred drops in uh, from Harness Racing, a hundred from Woodlands every time those colours uh, salute, and a hundred from the club at the venue as well. So uh, it's a great uh, great thing to get in behind. So I'll make give sure you one you question that. before we go. Who's going to win the Miracle Mile? That's an outstanding question. Well, thank you. I don't know. I, I don't know, Mike. Great comeback. Mm. Really quippy. Mm. Yeah. Um, next week well, on the show... Well, OK, then. <laughs> smart bottom. <laughs> Who's going to win it? No, smart bottom's not even the same. <laughs> um, next week I on the show, the we're, we're yes, going to talk is. about the sales because I think sales are coming up pretty quickly. Ah, and they are. We haven't had much of a chance to talk about them. Now, I want to find out also this whole ready-to-run concept, when's it going to go ahead, how's it all going to work, so we'll talk about that with you next week on the show. Yeah, we certainly will. 17, 18, 19, 20 is very close in this month, and we'll try and get the Miracle Mile winner out of him next week. Hope you've enjoyed your box seat. See you in a week.